are inspiring and exciting and make the future seem like it's going to be better than the past. Life can't just be about solving one miserable problem after another. It's got to be like what's inspiring and exciting. And I think that a future where we are space-bearing civilization is one that we can all get excited about. I think the first thing you got to do is, is build a, a base. And that, then that, that base would have like essentials of like food production, water, like which is have ice mining droids that were like go mine ice and then melt it and purify the water. For years, scientists have debated whether or not humans should attempt to colonize Mars. However, Elon Musk has spoken openly about his desire to see a Martian colony developed. In any case, the predictions of the billionaire are rapidly coming true. If he and his invention, SpaceX, were to make contact with any human species, whether they were native of Earth or members of a multi-planetary Aryan race, it would be the most ambitious and expensive effort in history. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the plans of the SpaceX founder to colonize Mars. One option if we want to become a multi-planet civilization, and that's Mars. But where, where things are right now, Mars is about half again as far from the sun as, as Earth. Uh, so still decent sunlight. It, it's a little cold, but we can warm it up. It has a, a very helpful atmosphere, which means that we can grow plants on Mars just by compressing the atmosphere. Elon Musk established SpaceX, the widely successful rocket firm, out of a concern that Earth may one day become inhospitable. Some of the nearest habitable planets to Earth are ones that include Mars. Mars still receives significant sunshine and cold, which, by the way, can be easily warmed by humans by compressing the Martian atmosphere. Plants may be cultivated by people, and the atmosphere consists mostly of carbon dioxide, along with trace amounts of nitrogen, argon, and a few other gases. In contrast to Earth, where a day lasts just 24 hours, Mars has a day that lasts around 24 hours and 37 minutes, and gravity is just approximately 38% of what it is on Earth. Humans, it turns out, are perfectly capable of adjusting to and thriving in a Martian environment. You know, that's at least kind of a three months journey, maybe upwards of a six, six or seven months journey. So if you're going to be in something for three to six months, you want to have like a cabin and then have like a common area for recreation and um, so some sort of meeting rooms or, you know, like because you'll be in this thing for months. Except that it takes around six months to go to Mars. To verify life on Mars would need about a thousand spacecraft and a million tons of vitamin C. Musk believes that a self-sufficient metropolis is necessary for human habitation on Mars. It's no secret that the ship's incessant demand for supplies has been a key stumbling block in the Mars colonization. The question of whether or not ships could return to Earth after landing on Mars has been discussed at length, despite NASA's assurances that the planet's resources won't be used to support tourism, but rather local life. How much is required for colonization is a key factor in determining whether or not life can be sustained on Mars. Anyone stranded on Mars without enough supplies is likely to have a difficult time due to the planet's minor differences with Earth. Intriguingly, SpaceX plans to launch a spaceship on the extremely heavy booster, which CEO Elon Musk sometimes calls the BFR, delivering roughly 13 tons into space. So the design, the production design of BFR is different in some important ways from what I presented about a year ago. According to SpaceX, its Falcon Heavy rocket booster is the most powerful in the world. The BFR is necessary because it will be able to launch several hundred tons into space, with a maximum of 1,000 tons planned for the future. The actual height of the BFR is projected to be 25 stories, and it will be equipped with about 42 strong Raptor engines enough to hoist a whole Boeing 747. Elon Musk, in his plans to populate Mars, describes how the BFR would launch the spaceship and link to a comparable rocket already in place to offer assistance on the voyage. On average, SpaceX plans to launch its reusable Starship rockets three times a day, carrying a 100-ton payload on each trip, and completing more than a thousand flights per year as part of the Starship transit system to Mars. There will be over 100,000 metric tons of goods in orbit, with a payload capacity of more than 100 tons every voyage. Since the orbits of both planets are most conveniently lined every 28 months, 1,000 starships could transport around 100,000 people from Earth to Mars at that time. 
that the spaceship part of the system is left less often because the Earth-Mars rendezvous only occurs every 26 months. So you get to use the spaceship part roughly every two years. And Mars happens to work out well for that because it has a CO2 atmosphere, it's got water ice in the soil, and with H2O and CO2 you can produce CH4, methane, and oxygen O2. Interestingly, Earth and Mars only line up to draw near to each other once every two years. This opens up a doorway for quick entry. However, multiple tanker spacecraft might be sent to replenish the carriers with extra fuel before they set out for Mars, using the fuel saved by the ships entering Earth orbit. With all of the hard effort being put in by SpaceX's crew, the Mars landing could not happen until 2022 or 2023. Indeed, Elon Musk has made it quite apparent that colonization of Mars by humans is not imminent. But he also said that there would be a lot more opportunities than on Earth, thanks to things like a direct democracy, in which people may make their own choices without having to worry about as many or as complex regulations. Hydroponic farms powered by the sun will be built underground or in a closed building to produce food. Research indicates that the Starship's landing site will be close to underground reservoirs of water and ice sort of exotic propellants or, or things that are difficult to obtain on Mars. Um, it uses uh, methane as fuel, and it's, it's primarily oxygen. It's sort of roughly 77, 78% oxygen uh, by weight. Um, and Mars has a CO2 atmosphere and has water ice, which is CO2 plus H2O, so you can make CH4, methane, and O2 oxygen. Right. Um, and there's water ice almost everywhere. You've got the, the CO2 plus H2O to make methane, CH4, and oxygen, O2. The liquid methane and liquid oxygen are used to power SpaceX's spacecraft. Because it burns so cleanly, this form of fuel allows rocket boosters to be used again. Nickel is used as the agent to manufacture methane from atmospheric carbon dioxide, and it can be readily collected from the water ice on Mars. SpaceX engineers estimate that 26 months are needed to create enough fuel on Mars to make the system effective and that 56,600 square meters of ground-based solar panels are required to provide the necessary electricity, which at this time just needs one spacecraft to transport to Mars. The vehicles may also be utilized to transport materials for Martian surface refueling. However, this is not yet confirmed. We know that Musk intends for the initial fleet of starships to carry the equipment and supplies they will need for future missions. With this gear, humanity can construct enough long-term facilities to produce electricity modify the Martian atmosphere, collect water, and convert the raw materials into oxygen and methane fuel for safe return missions to Earth. Two unmanned starships will verify the existence of water on the planet and potential exploration sites. They will also provide the essential framework for future studies, including identifying the potential impacts of future risks and identifying the nature of the hazard itself, such as a platform from which more primitive spacecraft may be launched. Assuming SpaceX's initial reconnaissance rockets prove effective, the company might proceed with plans to deliver manned starships to Mars. The first starships would house astronauts while they do more research. This might simplify the journey by eliminating the requirement to instantly construct dwellings on the planet. Elon Musk has said that he hopes to get a Mars outpost operational by 2028. Although several people with expertise in providing life support have voiced skepticism about this timeline simple lack of faith that life-sustaining technology will be available when needed. Certainly not a city fit for prolonged occupation. We all know that Elon Musk has a knack for making the seemingly impossible happen, and that he has his sights set on the Red Planet as a backup for humanity in the event that life on Earth becomes intolerable. Elon Musk previously suggested nuking Mars in order to make it more like Earth, but pictures of a rusty red planet transforming into a habitable world hint at a possible terraforming process. But this kind of climactic shift is something that's being done on purpose. Indications are made that Mars may be transformed into a wet and warm environment significantly better suited for permanent human habitation. Yes, but only if Mars's carbon dioxide-rich ice caps can be melted without much effort. There may not be enough trapped gases, according to NASA's analysis, to support a habitable planetary atmosphere via terraforming. Mars's atmospheric density is just 1% that of Earth. This essentially makes it the same thing as a vacuum. SpaceX is now performing testing at a site in Boca Chica, Texas, located in South Texas, extremely near the center of the Earth. It has already conducted many test flights of prototype starships and is gearing up for much more. Mars colonization is a long-term project. 
However, the wait will undoubtedly be worthwhile in the end.